Hey everyone, it has been a hot minute, but we are finally at the end of March, which means it is time for me to wrap up every book that I read in this month, as well as maybe give you some insights into what I'm going to be reading for the month of April. We got a lot of exciting new releases coming out that I'm super excited about. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the first book I read this month. The first book I read this month was Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young, which I gave one out of five stars. I hated this book. I did a whole rant review for it, which I'll leave in the description, and I really wanted to like it. I thought that the tropes were interesting, and I thought it was a really cool concept, but it just failed to deliver on multiple accounts for me. I do hope to read Fable and Namesake, so hopefully this author just is a fluke in this one book, but either way, I, I didn't end up enjoying it all that much. Basically, this book is about a Viking warrior princess, kind of. She's the daughter of the chieftain, and she is in the midst of a war between her tribe and another tribe whose gods decided that they hated each other, and so they go to war every five years on this specific battlefield. And they're in the midst of one of these battles when she sees her dead brother fighting on the battlefield. Finding out that he is alive, she follows him to the woods where she is captured by the enemy tribe. I really thought that this had a good setup. It definitely is the kind of tropes that I usually enjoy, but it was just not well executed in the end. Again, if you want more of my thoughts on the matter, go ahead and check my rant review out. The second book I read this month was And Every Morning The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Bachman. This is a very short story, under 100 pages, with beautiful illustrations if you get the hardcover copy, which is a little expensive given how little there is to it. Um, I gave this three out of five stars. I was really expecting to love this. It is supposed to be a crier, and I just was dry the whole time. I ended up thinking that this was kind of overhyped in a lot of ways, but that being said, my sister and my husband both loved this book and that they thought it was very well done. It essentially follows a man who is going through dementia at the very end of his life and saying goodbye to his memories, coming to terms with it, uh, while also trying to console his grandson and son in the process. That is the concept of the book, and it should be a crier, and for a lot of people it is. It just wasn't for me. I don't know, I, I thought it could have been more explored and well done in different aspects. Either way, it's very beautiful. The prose is beautifully written. I give it three out of five stars. The illustrations definitely added to the experience, and I would recommend this to people. Uh, just because it didn't really hit home for me doesn't mean that it wouldn't hit home for you. I know a lot of YouTubers who absolutely love this book. The next book I read was Royal Assassin, which is the second book in the Farseer trilogy. If you watched my last wrap-up video, you know that I was at the very end of Assassin's Quest at the end of last month, and I did end up finishing it albeit a little late. I'm not including it in my reads for March, though. I ended up really falling in love with the series. I loved Fitz as a character, and Royal Assassin, I just, it continued to enthrall me, and I really do enjoy this series so much. If you haven't seen any of my videos where I mention the Farseer trilogy, this series is about a young boy named Fitz who is a bastard to a prince. He ends up moving into the royal castle, or keep, uh, and it is just his life and a lot of bad things happen. I know a lot of YouTubers say that this book series could be rebranded of just Fitz Really Bad Day, and that really is what it is. So if you're looking for like an uplifting series, I wouldn't recommend this one, although it is incredibly well done. All of the characters are very fleshed out and the relationships make sense. You kind of watch Fitz do a lot of mundane things though in the midst of all these great schemes that are happening and taking place. And I kind of appreciate that because there is a lot of day-to-day -day life explored in this book, which is hilarious to me because it's supposed to be this epic fantasy and sometimes you just watch Fitz flirt with a girl and that's hilarious. I do also like the romance of a royal assassin. I know that things don't always work out the way that they're supposed to, but you know, I thought it was a really realistic relationship. Sorry if that's a spoiler. Speaking of which, I just realized that I totally mixed up Assassin's Quest and Assassin's Apprentice. I finished Assassin's Apprentice at the end of February. That being said, I am very excited to get into Assassin's Quest. I have not finished it yet, but once I finish the series, I think I will be doing a series review for it because I really did enjoy myself and Robin Hopp's writing is just worth talking about. The next book I read in anticipation for the TV show being dropped in April, and that is Siege and Storm, the second book in the Grisha trilogy. 
I have never been really big fan of this book series. I loved Six of Crows, that duology, and I thought it was very well done. I liked Ninth House not as much as Six of Crows, but I understood what she was trying to do there. This series, it just didn't grab me in the same way that Six of Crows did. There's not really that morally gray element that I really loved in that duology present in this trilogy. I liked well enough the first book. This one, I think it introduced some fun characters. I do like Nikolai, but I just wasn't, I don't know what happened in this book. Like, they kind of just got back to where they started and that was the book. And then now they're in a worse situation. But again, not a lot happened beyond the first few scenes and the last few scenes, which is why I rated this as less than the first book. I am going to continue because I do want to be completely caught up when the TV show comes out. But I, I just want y'all to know I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the series so far and I would recommend Six of Crows over this series. And I don't think that you need to read this series to read Six of Crows. So if you are interested in Lee Bardugo, start there or start with Ninth House. You don't necessarily need to read this. It's also a little bit lower of an age range in my opinion. The next book I read this month was Daughter of Deep Silence by Carrie Ryan. This was a standalone that I ended up really enjoying. It's a little bit of a murder mystery revenge story about a horrible event that happens on a cruise ship where there are only three survivors. We follow the main character who remembers a very different set of events leading to all of the people on this cruise ship dying than the other two survivors. This obviously leads to a lot of big convoluted plots and I ended up really enjoying it. It has a very low rating on Goodreads, and I think it's just because it's a very short book, so you don't really get to dive into the mystery as much as you would in a little bit of a longer book. I thought it was better than the Goodreads ratings led on, so I ended up getting this four out of five stars. I think people should probably give this a little bit more love than they do. All right, the next book. I have put off reading this book for so long. I have owned this book for about nine months and I have looked at it every day and been like, I need to read that, I need to read that. It's by my favorite author, I just need to bite the bullet and read it. And I didn't want to because I didn't want to not have it to read anymore. I wanted there to still be a book that I could read from her that was out there in the world. But uh, alas, I read it and yeah, she's got my number. If you follow me on Instagram or you've seen my favorite author's video, you could probably guess at what I'm talking about. It is Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. The sequel is set to come out in November and I cannot wait long enough. This was a five star read for me and I think that the last 150 pages is maybe the best 150 pages I have ever read in any book in my opinion. I cried so hard. I was on a roller coaster of emotions. I cheered in my small apartment and I'm sure I annoyed my neighbors because I just felt so many things over this book. And what's funny is I see that there's a lot of mixed reviews on it, at least on booktube. On Goodreads, it's overwhelmingly positive. But on booktube, I've seen a lot of rant reviews for this and I don't get it. I don't share those views at all. I connected to Bryce so much as someone who also lost someone in my family very early on in life, I related to the way that she grieved. Honestly, it was painful reading from her perspective because it just reminded me so much of myself and I felt those emotions creeping back up and I just love this book so much. I thought the romance honestly was not the selling point. I thought that Bryce and the characters in the world were so much more interesting and that final battle, oh my God. So if you're actually trying to give Sarah J Maas a chance, you didn't like Akatar as much, you didn't like Throne of Glass as much, I would still say try Crescent City. It is an urban fantasy set in a sprawling city that deals with the theme of grief very deeply. You follow a girl named Bryce who is half fae and is kind of looked down upon in this society and is just trying, trying to kind of figure out her life while being a party girl and dealing with a bunch of quirky characters. Anyway, long story short, read this book, give it a chance, even if you don't usually like Sarah J Maas's writing. I was floored. It is an 800 page book though, so definitely uh, understand that this is gonna be a long one and a long haul. I read it all in one shot. I think I read it over like two or three days, just nonstop. 
crying my eyes out. So, Crescent City. Maybe my new favorite Sarah J Mass series. We'll see once it's completed. Speaking of Sarah J Mass series, I do have to make a really quick note here because of course I have to talk about it. They just released that there is going to be an Akatar TV show. I am both very concerned and very excited. This series means a lot to me, so I'm hoping that it's really well done. I don't really care as much on the casting side of it, and I know there's been a lot of hate going to possible actors, which should not be the case. That is completely uncalled for. Um, that being said, there are things I'm worried about. Like, I'm very worried about the public reception and treating this like a Fifty Shades of Grey and having it be deemed as less than in cinema and in TV show world. And I am very concerned about that, so we'll see how they handle it. We'll see what public reception is, but I would hate for people to end up seeing this as a housewife's wet dream kind of situation. I, I, I do worry about that. Anyway, let's get off that topic. Well, I'll talk about it more in my Instagram probably at some point. So if you do want to engage me in any conversations there, leave it in the comments or see me on my Instagram. The next book I read was Crier's War by Nina Varela. This was a three out of five stars for me. I was really hoping for it to be more. This is a sapphic sci fantasy romance that takes place after a robot race has taken over the world and uses humans essentially as slaves or lesser beings. And you will follow a romance between the princess of this world and her handmaiden or servant who is actually a part of the rebellion of humans trying to get rid of the robot race. I think it could have been really good and it had a great concept, but I do think that in this one instance, I do believe that YA stereotypes and certain tropes kind of got in the way of what could have been a really amazing story. Uh, what I mean by that is that it does have that tendency to not go as dark as it could and not show you as much as it could. The characters are not as fleshed out as they could be. And I don't believe that is a true trend in YA. I believe YA is actually branching way more into NA and really delving into themes without having to censor themselves anymore. This though tends to be the case of those stereotypes that you've heard of about YA. That's kind of my thoughts about this book, if that makes sense. There was a lot of repeating words in that phrasing. Please forgive me. But either way, I thought it was fine. It gave it three out of five stars. I think that if you are more into middle grade, you might like this a little bit more than someone who leans more on the NA side of YA. So that's where I'll leave that. I will say I was really excited to see a lesbian romance being explored in a YA book. I don't think that is a common theme, but if you want recommendations, I might do a video about that some other time. I just think there are better ones than this. The next book I read was Akata Witch by Neri Okorofor, and I ended up really enjoying this. Sorry if I butchered that name. I, I didn't mean to. I'm trying really hard with this one. This book is like an African version of Harry Potter. It is middle grade, more so than YA or NA, and I usually don't enjoy that genre, but I really enjoyed this one. It follows a girl named Sunny who is albino and just moved back from the States to her home country with her family, and through her two kind of interesting friends, she realizes that she has magic powers. This world is whimsical. It has fantastic monsters and little quests. The friendships are really well developed and very cute. There is budding romances and I just think that this could end up being a really amazing series and I hope people give it more of a chance because I usually don't like middle grade and I ended up really loving this. I ended up giving this 4.5 out of 5 stars which is ginormous praise from me. I very rarely give star ratings above that unless it's Sarah J Mass because I am a simp for SJM, but I really believe people need to read this book. I think it could turn into something amazing, and if you have kids who are around the middle grade age group, this is a great opportunity to show them some different cultures and different takes on things like Harry Potter. It has that vibe, and it is so well done. The next book I read was This Savage Song by V.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab, and I really liked this. I gave this four out of five stars, and it is basically like a Romeo and Juliet in a monster-filled city. Think urban fantasy, 
and gang wars. This follows two characters, Kate Harker, who is the daughter of a infamous gang boss in Northern City, who has just come back after burning down a church at her old boarding school. She is trying to be the baddest bitch out there and she succeeds for the most part. The other character we follow is August Flynn, who is the monster adopted son of the gang or rebellion leader, really, of South City. This has a very cute romance, although it really doesn't go into it in a very excruciating detail, and it's not the main point of the pre series. So, if you like romances in the background, that's kind of more what this is. But it has amazing world building. The only thing I would say is I kind of just wanted more. Like, they give you three types of monsters. I think they could have given me a million, and I think it could have been built upon really well. They definitely had the foundation for that. So, maybe in future books, they do add more monster types and everything. I'm really excited to read the second book, but for right now, with the knowledge I have, I think it's great. And the last book I read in the month of March is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berendt. This is a nonfiction book that follows a murder that happens in Savannah, Georgia. That being said, I see that this reads a lot less murder mystery and a lot more of a love letter to Savannah. It has a cast of quirky characters who are all involved in rumors and scandals. All in all, I wanted to read a nonfiction for the month of March, and I'm very glad I chose this one. I think that it was so fun and entertaining, and I really enjoyed myself. I took it on a ski trip to Steamboat Springs in Colorado, and I had so much fun the entire time. It was like a wild ride, and it was like peeking through the window into the lives of these crazy individuals. So if you're looking for a nonfiction and it's not usually your genre, I recommend picking this up. I think it's fantastic and reads like fiction. All right, guys, that is it. Those are all the books I read in the month of March. I am super excited for April. I am starting off the month with a buddy read of An Ember in the Ashes, which is a series that is so beloved and I have never read before. So I'm super excited excited about that. I will also be reading The Crown of Gilded Bones that is coming out, which is the third series in the From Blood and Ash series. So I'm definitely looking forward to that as well. As far as themes go, I'm really not set on a specific theme, but I am going to be doing a lot of YA fantasy and adult fantasy just trying to catch up because as I posted on my Instagram recently, I have 45 books in my physical TBR and that's just a little too many for me to feel comfortable with. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.